Hey my friends, this time I have a video-to-video -video workflow for you. It is a special workflow for very limited needs. I personally have just used it once. It works across open posts. It extracts the movement of characters from our input video and combines it then with a prompt. Perfect to use some dances here, for example, and generate a video with the movement then. How does it work? You need to load a video, an input video here in the input video node. This is a full path that you need to type in here, absolute paths. Then you adjust the prompt. Um, it does not need to be multiple prompts. One prompt is also very valid. And then you need to adjust the size and type in the number of frames. 149. I have six seconds here. So this is 24 frames multiplied with 6, 148 plus 1. And then you press Q, and then you get a result. It is an older method. The result is not so perfect. There are better methods now. I think I have seen one with IP adapter, but that is not so bad neither. You need to toy around with the settings here. And keep in mind that Open Pose and Animate Diff is not so happy with fast movements or uh, characters that turns around. As you can see, there is nearly nothing left from turning around. Well, it is to some degree, but it is not one to one. This is an example, or perfect example, of what this method is not really capable of. But the result is not bad neither. Ignore this one. This was an experiment with double context length and the JT LoRa. Does not work as you can see. Let's dive in. It is a workflow for Animate Diff 3. When you have watched my former video about prompt traveling, this workflow is very close to it. It also uses prompt traveling. What is extra here is the the control net instances and that it uses two K samples here. We have for version 3 here the adapter. When you want to use, just in case, not recommended, when you want to use version 2, bypass this node here and then you can choose or use version 1.5, version 2. But as told, this workflow here is for version 3. So, best leave this alone. The rest of the loader contains the usual stuff, our checkpoint and the VAE. I have, as usual, added a note here where to find it and where to put it. The Animate Div Group. We have the context options and we have the legacy loader, since this one gives us better results with Animate Diff version 3 and 2. For LCM, you would need a completely different setup. Leave the context options alone, they are fine as they are. The settings. Um, I have also here the free V, this time version 2, in the pipeline. Free V gives better consistency in the video result. So I have it in the pipeline. It is a good thing. The batch size, I choose the same size as the Im input image and the number of frames. Um, this one is a curious. I always put it at 149. I turn around and every time the value is increased somehow, don't know what Comfy does here. We have six seconds multiplied by 24 frames makes 148 frames plus one. And here we have, of course, the input video. By the order, we could also put it here, but I found it better to have it as close as possible to the prompt. This is a um, public domain video, a short sample of a public domain video with uh, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers dancing around. Here we come to the prompt traveling. Um, you add a keyframe and what should happen at this keyframe? 
And I let the couple dance in front of a curtain, in front of a beach and a skyline at night. And this arrives here. This is really nice. You could, by the way, also simply choose one of these, let's say, keyframe zero, dancing at a beach. We have here a string literal to append text. So this is, this is uh, information that is valid for the whole prompt. And this here, this prompt here is just valid for this single keyframe. The negative prompt is self-explaining. Just add everything that the media should not contain. Let's come to the ControlNet instances here. We have two instances and each of it has its own case sampler. We could already use, this is the preview video, the result from the open pose and the first case sampler instance. It is already not this bad, but running through a second case sampler and adding another instance of ControlNet gives us a bit more detail and refines everything to the good. I have, since we have two case samplers in the pipeline anyways, added an upscaler tool, one for the latent, one for the image. Uh, that way we can use the second case sampler as an upscaler, in addition to the second control net instance, which gives us some improvement in consistency and look. And the second case sampler then adds a bit more detail. Don't go too high here. You pay this upscaling by an extra amount of lots of time, since you have a second case sampler instance running. And the first instance already uses uh, around eight minutes. Just to compare here. Eight minutes for the first instances and more than double of the time just by increasing the size by a factor 1.2. Okay. Um, to change or improve the quality, you have to toy around with the control net, apply control net with these values. Strength. Also here, the second instance, strength. What also is important is, of course, the number of steps in the case sampler. I have added an extra upscaling here too, by factor two. It is a simple method. I would recommend to do the upscaling in an extra workflow. Maybe turn this one off, maybe even remove the second instance and do this in an extra step. This is, by the way, the difference between preview and final. It gives, it, this version here has a bit more detail. It is not this good to see here, but it has. If it is worth for you to run this extra step, it's up to you. So we can also turn off the second case sampler and work with this result already. Sharpen node, I had turned it off for my experiments. I have turned it on again. This really makes sense. It makes the video a bit more crisp compared to the preview video. So this makes sense. Let's keep it on. Now the last group here, frame interpolation. I've initially, when I started to use this workflow, I thought, okay, this is, has to do with the every nth frame, but um, the images itself does not only go into here the um, open pose, but we have our fixed frames. And so frame interpolation would just make it slower. It is not needed here. I nevertheless keep it in the workflow. Maybe somebody wants to produce a slow motion video. This is the method. And that was it. Have fun with this workflow.